The question is, why are you willing to risk losing someone that you don't want to lose for someone you do not want to keep? You know, it speaks to lack of self-control. It speaks to no respect for the covenant of marriage, the relationship, or the woman. It speaks to being greedy. It speaks to lust. Here was a man that literally was being blessed with opportunity, opportunities that others in the same lane as him were not given. A favor of sorts. And he took something that was a blessing and risked, risked the whole thing for his flesh because he couldn't control his flesh because he thought that what he was doing was never going to be discovered. It was never supposed to come out. And you know, one of the most troubling things is as the receipts are coming in from the different side pieces, and by the way, they're usually the ones who spill the beans and the tea. I mean, he was even providing these women that he's having the affair with intimate details about his wife. Who the levels of low downness that comes with that? of you have ever been cheated on? Do you understand what that feels like? Because I know I've been there before. My first marriage, my first husband was not commitment minded. And stepping outside of the marriage seemed to be second nature to him. And once I'd had enough, I'd had enough and I filed for divorce and I never looked back. I don't regret it. He, on the other hand, does. But you shouldn't, number one, be stepping outside your relationship or your marriage. And number two, why would you compromise your wife's personal information just because you want to go dig in some new poo nanny? You know, it's already enough that you're breaking the vows, but then you want to further uncover her by providing your side chick with really explicit, detailed information about your wife. So you violated her not only by bringing another person and sleeping with them in the same bed that you lay up with and create your children with, with your wife. But now you're gonna violate her and uncover her by telling her secrets in the most darkest moments of her life. What is the world coming to? Well, you know what? That's what happens when you're living a double life. That's what happens when you say one thing, but you do another double life. Saying one thing, living a lie over here, doing something completely opposite over there, thinking that you're untouchable, thinking that no one has the power to uncover your misdeeds and look what happened. It always comes at the most inopportune time, doesn't it? Oh, beware for whatever a man is sowing, this he shall also Read, you know, along, along with, you know, side chicks or side pieces, typically being the one that spills the beans, I also have to add that it's also a man who gets, or a woman, or a woman, because women cheat. Oh my goodness, they cheat. You know, sometimes the person who's committing the infidelity or committing the adultery gets so comfortable that they get sloppy in what they're doing. And most of the time, that's how they get caught too. So, I want to transition into this because I'm going somewhere with this. 
The question that's always been asked, why don't relationships of today last as long as they did yesteryear or during the days that our, grand, our grandparents or our great-grandparents and going even further back, why don't they last as long as they used to? Most people want to know the secret. Most people do. They want to know the secret. Why doesn't it last as long? You know, why don't relationships last as long as they used to? Mm. Well, watching this saga unfold, I think I got it. What part of it? You know, once everything came out, this man brought his wife out. And she sat beside him while they did a few videos explaining that they were having some marital issues and how they were separated and that basically she was going to stand by her husband. Oh, excuse me. She was going to stand by her husband. She held his hand and, you know, people had their say on her appearance or whatever, but this, this woman seems to be really planted into the word of God. This woman seems to be an authentic soldier for the kingdom of God. And she went on to quote the scriptures and she gave uh, her feedback on what everybody had to say about not only how she was looking, but her decision to stay with her husband. And they talked, she talked about something during one of her videos by herself you know, where she blamed the devil and she knew exactly what this was. This was an attack of the enemy. She recognized what it was and the enemy was not going to have the final say in her marriage. Kudos to her for wanting to stand up and fight for her family. I, nor you, can ever judge a woman for wanting to, you know, fight for the family. But let me ask you this. Can you really blame the devil when your partner is complicit with the devil's plans? I mean, you can say it's the devil coming against my marriage or the devil, you know what, is found his way into our home. You can say all of that. But what about if, you're, if your partner is signing up for the job? Your partner is very complicit with the devil's plans for the demise of your relationship. I think a lot of our great grandmothers, our grandmothers were really grounded in Christianity. And because of their belief system, they believed, as this young woman did, that they needed to um, be in this spiritual warfare to fight for their families. My thoughts are, as long as we're fighting together, we stand a chance. But when you're fighting against the relationship, when you're fighting against and your actions are contradicting the outcome for us to have a successful marriage or a successful relationship, I gotta let you make it. You're costing me my peace. And no amount of praying is going to stop you from doing what you want to do because my belief system teaches me that God gives us free will. You have a choice. You have a choice to do right and you have a choice to do wrong. You can blame the devil all day long, but when you sign up and you volunteer, here I go, here I am, choose me, I'll do it. What can you really say to that? Doesn't it need to be the both of you fighting to do the right thing, not only for the marriage and the relationship, but for each other? Because why would you intentionally want to hurt the person that you claim to love the most? Does that make you a good man? Does that make you a good wife? Does that make you a godly woman? Does that make you a godly man? When you do things that intentionally cause harm, emotional distress, mental anguish to your partner. Whatever the answer to your question to that was, if you are one of the offenders, then I need to ask you, what God do you serve? If you die today in your sin, 
Where do you expect to go? And this is not even a Christian channel. This is not a Christian show. This is just doing the right thing by the person that you lay down with every night, by the person that you are supposed to love and protect and honor. You know. And another thing, what really stood out was hiding behind Christianity and using Christianity as an excuse to stay in an abusive relationship. You know, well, you know, forgiving your partner, forgiving your spouse, and wanting to see the good in them, and understanding that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I get all of that. I do. But going back to the question of why is it that relationships of yesteryear tended to last a little bit longer is because I really think that our ancestors were uh, really, really connected to preserving, I mean, they were committed to, excuse me, they were committed to protecting the family unit at all costs. And they were really in tune with Christianity and following the tenets of, the, of Christianity as a religion as a whole. So instead of looking at the actions of the person that you're in the relationship with, we tend to place a broad umbrella over the sin without requiring that the person who's committing the offense puts in the work to get rehabilitated and sin no more. Repentance. You know, making a, 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 a proclamation or saying that I am here to stand by my man, does your man or does your woman want to stand by you? Have they really done the work that is needed and necessary to make sure that you guys can come out of this storm? That you guys can even have a future? Because in this case, this man got up off this interview and as soon as he had used his wife to try to save his business and save faith, he was on the phone with the mistress. He was on the phone with the mistress that he fathered the child with and then they had an abortion of the baby. This is not hearsay, this is from the horse's mouth. You see, that's what I'm saying. This is what I want, the point I wanna make. Saying that you wanna stick by a cheater's side before they have actually put in the work, before they have actually actually gotten it through their head the impact of their actions and asked for forgiveness and repented for what they have done you need to back off i mean really because you're forgiving them and what they go out they get up five minutes later and go do it again how is that in the interest the best interest of the relationship when a partner acts like and for those of you who have been in a marriage or a relationship and that person violated you by stepping outside of the relationship, they were actually having sexual intercourse with another individual. Do you understand how devastating that was to you? Do you understand how that physically affected you? Do you understand how much your heart hurt it hurted when you found out, when you discovered that the person that you were married to, that the person that you have been in love with, that the person that you are only, not only sharing your bed with your life with has found the nerve to step outside of the relationship. Do you understand how that felt? Well, if you don't want to feel that again, then I would suggest to you is before you start giving out forgiveness, second and third chances, that you really take a step back and allow God to intercede in the situation, if not for them, for you, to protect you and your best interests, right? You matter. How you are impacted by a cheating spouse matters because they've been allowing themselves to be used as a tool by the enemy all this time, giving in to the desires of the flesh. They weren't sorry about it before they got caught. So do you really think they're sorry about it now? Because they were willing to put everything on the line. Everything on the line. They were willing to risk it all 
to be inside of another person's body or allowing another person to be inside of their body. Do you understand how intimate the act of lovemaking is and that you have to live with the mental images of your partner laying up with somebody when they took vows to you. Hiding behind Christianity won't fix a partner that doesn't see the error of their ways and that doesn't see the need to change. You can pray all day long. Prayer does change things. If not, but only for you. And I, I guess a lot of people tend to overlook that. You know, they want to use God, especially the perpetrators. Check this out. The perpetrators always want to use God as a manip uh, manipulation tactic to keep the person that they violated into the relationship, such as said individual we're talking about, the relationship guru. You got to be careful. Sometimes people prey upon your weaknesses. And if you're in a relationship and you've been cheated on by this person and they know that you really, you know, hold your faith dear and close to your heart, don't allow the enemy to manipulate you into staying in an abusive, toxic, unhealthily, ungodly relationship just so they can have their cake and eat it too. I need you to be very careful about that. And I need you to be very careful and intentional on how you move in that moment. Even though you are in despair, even though you may be hurting, I need you to be present in that moment because what you do next matters. Don't be so quick to hop back in that thing. Mm -mm. Don't be so quick to do that. Make them do the work. Allow God to do the work in that relationship because once infidelity is introduced into your marriage or your relationship, do not dare be deceived and think that just an apology will fix it. If it's that easy to be fixed with a simple I'm sorry, chances are it's going to happen again. Beware, my friends. Chances are it's going to to happen again because whatever allowed that person to think so little of the, the relationship to place no value on the relationship whatever that was if it hasn't been fixed or corrected or taken the necessary steps such as coaching and counseling and going to therapy to fix it it will happen it'll happen again trust me been there done that First marriage taught me all that I needed to know about that. And it gives me no pleasure to have to be able to sit here and talk about that. But like many, so many people that get comfortable with cheating and stepping outside the relationship, they don't understand.